so it's 7.30, yeah, 7.30 in the morning, and uh, temperatures are still in the 30s. It was almost freezing when I woke up. And in southeast Louisiana, that's that's basically a blizzard. It's about as close as you'll get to a blizzard. And, uh, and I'm going fishing. I'd rather be in the deer stand, but that's not an option. And we planned this trip a couple of weeks ago when the temperatures were in the 80s. So we're headed down to Reggio to chase redfish. Skunk Master went down there uh, a couple of weeks ago and tangled with some really nice fish. Unfortunately, again, temps were in the 80s, now they're in the 30s, and I've never fished in freezing cold temperatures, so this will be a first for me. Spent a lot of time on the internet this week doing a little bit of research, got some ideas in my head of where I might go and what I might look for, and we're starting out a lot later in the hopes that the water will warm up a little bit. But I have no idea how today's going to work out. So hopefully we'll put some fish in the boat. We'll have something to show you at the end of the day. And if not, at least when it's over with, I can talk about cold weather gear and how to stay comfortable on the water. Or I can describe my miserable day freezing to death on the water. But uh, about 10 minutes out of the launch, and Mark and I are going to go see if we can't get it done. So let's go see if we can't catch some fresh fish in freezing water. I'm hot already. Oh, than being cold. Yeah, I gotta take the sweatshirt off. Getting overheated is just as damn dangerous. I can't believe that, man. What is it, like 40 degrees? There's a uh, 31 degrees when we got out in the rig, so right around there. I bet when we turn the point and uh, get into that wind, I'll uh, want the sweatshirt back. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we're gonna want that back yeah, we'll see. The interesting thing about paddling versus being in a boat is, A, we're not going too fast. That makes me nervous. Completely aside, but there's a deer feeder right there. That's yeah, it's deer season, bro. Let's, uh, let's be not deer. Yeah, you remember on the Pearl River Canal when that dude shot the guy in the boat because he thought he was a wild hog? You ever seen a wild hog with a 25 horsepower mercury? of those canals and just take a look it's new ground should be deeper water there we can throw something on the bottom yeah, I switched out. So we're rolling this off the bottom. man I could have been hanging up on everything throwing that though you're going weedless that's but let's see uh let's see if the wind's better on the other side because I can't like that shallow stuff I just can't get in there for the wind the way it's blowing water out, man, I'm afraid to get in there and turn into a mud flat, you know? Right, what do you think of this camera angle? Is that extreme?
So, due to the weather conditions, and no big surprise, we finished up yesterday with no fish. So, Mark and I pulled up to the launch, and we shot a segment talking about the cold weather gear that we wore, because both of us had stayed relatively comfortable, despite some pretty severe conditions. When I got home and started editing it yesterday evening, I discovered that with the 22 mile per hour wind gusts, everything that we had shot, talking about our gear, had been... Uh, had been overblown with wind and was completely un, unlistenable and was worthless. So I just came back from his house where we spent a few minutes reshooting that entire segment in his driveway. So uh, here we go. Since we didn't catch any fish and since my redfish drought continues, here's Mark and I telling you about the gear we wore to keep us warm. So first off, uh, here it is Sunday the 11th and Temperatures are almost 20 degrees higher. It's a wonderful day and the winds calmed down. I actually would love to have been in Reggio today catching fish instead of yesterday freezing to death and not catching anything. And the biggest issue we ran into was the wind. In fact, so much so that when I came home and reviewed the footage that we shot talking about our gear, I discovered that there was so much wind noise, it was completely unusable. So we had to reshoot the next day. So. I want to show you what I was wearing yesterday that kept me comfortable from beginning to end in 30 degree weather with 22 mile per hour winds. And I'm going to start with the base layer. I have Patagonia Capoline, which is high end, really expensive. I got it when I was working nights and desperately needed a thin layer to keep me warm. Uh, I don't believe you have to spend hundreds of dollars for a base layer, but I will tell you that synthetics are the way to go. That I wouldn't bother with cotton because that collects, you know, that actually holds moisture in. Either use a polyester blend or some type of synthetic or pay really big money and use more. But a, a thin base layer is the starting point any time of the morning. Now on top of that, believe it or not, I like sweatpants. This isn't the pair I wore yesterday because they're in the wash, but uh, fleece actually protects a little bit for water. It repels water a little bit. It's comfortable. It's warm. You look like a dork when you stop in the gas station on the way in, but it doesn't change the fact that you're comfortable and warm. Uh, on top of that, I wore a long sleeve t-shirt. We've all seen long sleeve t-shirts. I don't need to show you. And my new, brand new after the Hopedale trip, bright orange, please don't run over me with your boat sweatshirt. And this lasted, believe it or not, all of 10 minutes. By the time I paddled around the corner from the launch, I was already getting hot in my upper body and I lost this real quick yesterday. Of course, I did use gloves for the first half of the day. I hate gloves. But when you started getting water on my hands paddling, it became really uncomfortable. So I have some water resistant gloves that I've had for a long time. I'm not sure who they're from. I know they can't be that expensive because I don't use gloves. So it was just enough to keep the beads and water off of me to keep me from freezing. Thin neck gaiter. I don't like the thick ones because I just I don't like the constriction around my throat. But having something that you can cover your neck and that you can pull up over your ears if necessary or over your mouth is awesome. And in fact, we see people nowadays that are wearing these in the middle of summer. Of course, the fleece hat, uh, either fleece or wool. I actually like both. This one is fleece, and it's lighter, lighter weight. Uh, I mean, they start at four bucks. You can spend big money, but for four dollars, you get a hat that that does everything you need it to. Uh, I love wool, so underneath, wool socks, always wool socks. This is the one I will tell you: pay money for socks. Do not mess with anything else. Pay money for socks. You will, you will never regret paying big money for a pair of wool socks. Big disappointment for me, and I'd used these last year, a different pair last year, but the neoprene socks from Magellan, they're supposed to be gravel free, and uh, I used them all last winter just to keep my socks dry and keep the water off the lower part of my pants. I got out there yesterday, I stepped in the water, and immediately there was a pinhole leak in one of these that got water on my wool socks. If I hadn't had wool socks, if I'd been wearing cotton socks, I would have had to stop, change socks, because they got soaking wet. But with the wool, it actually wicks moisture away from your body, and I, I did okay. But these did not work as well as I'd hoped, so I'm going to be researching some better options, and I'll get back with you. The one that I'm very happy with, 
and I was ambivalent, really, when I looked at the $75 price tag. But I had gone to Academy and purchased the the actual rain bibs, the fishing wet weather gear. You know, you watch the guys on the Bass Series on TV, and they're always wearing these. So I went and I spent the 75 bucks, and I kind of regretted it until I got on the water yesterday. And this kept me warm and dry throughout the day. It was comfortable, it was easy, and and it kept the water off of me. These things were friggin' amazing. I stepped in the water to launch my kayak, and it didn't penetrate this fabric. So I can't say enough good about that. So I'm far from a cold weather expert, but I was stationed in Fort Drum, New York for three years. And you can't spend three winters in the field in Fort Drum, New York without learning a thing or two about cold weather survival. And so I've always had kind of a cold weather survival pack anytime I'm in the woods. The biggest threat in Louisiana, the biggest threat in the south where we are is always hypothermia because that can kick in in temperatures up to the, as high as 50 degrees. So it's always nice when winter comes around to have some things to help prevent that. Now, I bought my Hobie last year in February, and immediately we went into a cold snap where we had about a week of 20 degree temperatures where I was. And the only way I was going to get to test my brand new toy was to get out on the water in 20 degree weather. So I put together a survival kit in the fear of falling out, getting wet, something going wrong. And I, I used it yesterday, and I wanted to show it to you a little bit. First thing is signaling, yellow road guard strap. If you've ever been in the military, you know how important this is. This is the number one safety feature ever invented. You are unsafe if you do not have one of these somewhere around, period. You're unsafe. Emergency blanket. This is an easy option. They're available almost everywhere. They're really inexpensive. This one is actually a larger one, and it's reversible with silver and green. Uh, the big thing about it is, is I know from personal experience that they'll hold in heat, even in cold temperatures, but you can also use them to make a field expedient shelter. And with the silver side, they can be used for signaling. So not only can you build a tent, but you can build it out of a silver material that's easily seeable, and it'll hold temperatures in. So this is a very easily packed, small item, fairly inexpensive, that should go with you any time of the winter. Pocket knife, just because I had one. Pen light, just because I had one. Those are always good things to have. Cigarette lighter and a little bit of tinder. That is absolutely, has to go with you anytime you go in the woods, in my opinion, period. You should, if you go in the woods, you should have a cigarette lighter and some type of tinder. Now this is a sleeping bag liner. I found them in Academy. They run about three bucks, depending on which one you get. This one is a, uh, I believe, cotton or poly blend and it's a square. So basically it's like an old school child sleeping bag. It's really thin, it packs down really light. And the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is, is it gives you something to wrap up in. So it, since it packs so light, I went ahead and threw it in. Food, I had it. These little packets of salmon and, and tuna are cheap and they last forever. And in cold weather, your body needs energy to heat itself and you get those energies from calories. So in cold weather, you should be eating more than you normally would in hot weather. So as part of your survival packet, you should have a little bit of chow just in case, just to kind of fire up that metabolism and get the body heat done. Everything else is clothing, and it's basically as I had extras. So, you know, extra wool cap. It doesn't fit particularly well. It actually is kind of tight and hurts my head, but it, it'll be dry. Wool socks, it's the same thing. I got a cheaper pair of wool socks. I didn't like the cut. They bunch up in my shoes. They're awful. I won't wear them on a day-to-day -day basis, but for a survival kit, they'll work. Spare neck gaiter, cheap, inexpensive, and it folds up small. Synthetic top, it's another cheap one. That doesn't really fit well. Shows off my beard got too heavy, but uh, for our purposes, it fits in the bag and will work. And these are actually cotton. So I do not recommend these for day-to-day -day usage, but I had them, and they'd be dry. So they go in the survival kit. And a small windproof coat. It's not particularly heavy, 
it's not particularly waterproof, and again, it, it's kind of ill-fitting. It doesn't really work for me on a day-to-day -day basis, but it packs up small, and it works as a wind block, and it's fairly weatherproof. I won't call it waterproof, but it's water-resistant, so it provides a little bit of comfort if something goes desperately wrong. And all of that crams into a dry bag. And if you watch the video, you can actually on a couple of occasions see this dry bag was clipped to the bungees in the front hatch of uh, my native. And when it's in my Hobie, I just throw it in the front hatch of the Hobie. And, you know, it's there. If I roll the boat, all I have to do is self-recover, pop the hatch, and we're good. And the other thing I'd like to discuss real quick, mostly because I'm bad at it, is hydration. In cold weather, it is just as easy to get dehydrated as in warmer weather. You have to pay attention to your water and fluid intakes. You don't feel thirsty. You don't feel hot. You don't really feel the dehydration effects the way you would in 80 degree temperatures, but it's still happening. So anytime you're in the woods, anytime you're outdoors, even in cold weather, you need to pay attention to hydration. So it's my turn to show you what I was wearing yesterday and you're going to notice a complete theme with all of this. Because I kind of bought a lot of this stuff for work. So we'll just get right in with my base layer. My bottoms, I had a thin set of polypropylene. Um, I like the thin a lot better than the thick because it's a lot easier to uh, put under your clothes. It's a, it's a real good set. Um, and again, the whole synthetic theme. Uh, above that, Under Armour Cold Gear. It's worth the money. Uh, I love this shirt. I wear it all the time when it gets cold, especially in the real big cold snaps in January and February. Uh, it wicks the moisture right away from you and it keeps you nice and toasty, sometimes a little too toasty. Um, on top of that, I have my normal clothes. The only thing I don't have to show you is my Under Armour socks because I only have a couple pairs and they're all in the laundry. But I did invest in some Under Armour cold weather socks that I just absolutely love. And it's a good alternative to the wool for me because um, it's something when it warms up in the day, you can leave them on and it'll continue to whip the moisture where I find wool eventually gets a little soggy for me, but that's my issue. On top of that, I just had a standard North Face fleece I love these things because they can be, you know, you throw them on when it's 60 degrees outside and you're nice and warm. You can also use it as a layer when it's 40 degrees and blowing outside. Uh, so, north, your fleece. Then I had a, a fleece cap. Again, cheap, effective. I have my neck gaiter on. This one's a little thicker than what Jeremy wears. Um, basically because the way it was given to me and I kind of never really invested in anything thinner. I only wear this during the winter. But on top of that, I have my all-purpose scarf, which is also given to me in the Army. It's a, it's a thin cotton, so it can be worn in the summer or winter, and I always throw it on in the winter to have that extra layer in case something happens. Um, it's just really it's like an extra large scarf that was fine enough and uh, I love it I do and then my top layer everything was Gore-Tex I had the standard BDU or camouflage pattern generation one pants on uh, they're water resistant they're not waterproof but they'll keep the wind and the water off of you for a good long time unless you take a nice dunk. Then at the top I had a generation 3 Gore-Tex jacket minus the liner because I was using my North Face as the liner instead of uh, actually putting my liner in. This one's a little better keeping the moisture off of you but it'll still sink through but Gore-Tex is very breathable so you still have some airflow in and out and then my boots were just standard issued uh, mountain boots. There's nothing fancy to them. They're made by Bellevue and they're water resistant and they have a nice about an inch heel and an inch uh, sole on them so when you step in the water to launch the kayak you're not putting your feet directly in the water. And that's all I, I pretty much wore. A bunch of stuff from work and 
just to keep me warm and I, I used the small thin layers and I just layered it up. So instead of having one big bulky over layer, I had multiple layers that I could take on and off uh, under and on top of my standard clothing. Nothing fancy to it, but highly effective. Hey, it's Mark with Lucky Hat Outdoors. If you like what you've seen, or want to see more, hit that like and subscribe button down below. And check us out on Facebook and Instagram.